Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about DNA origami. So DNA origami you might have heard. Origami is nothing but a five-folded kind of structure which is actually basically named by, uh, you know, in the, in, after uh, some other group of scientists in Japan. So DNA origami is nothing but a technique in nanotechnology that involves in folding DNA molecules into specific shapes. So what is nanotechnology? First we understand that. So nanotechnology in the sense any materials if their size is less than 100 nanometer okay if the size falls in 0 0.1 to 100 nanometer their dimensions if any one of the dimensions like it can be the diameter or it can be the length or it can be the width so any of these three three dimensions any one of the dimension is coming in nanoscale then we call it as a uh, nano nanomaterials now these nanomaterials will have different properties from the bulk that is why we are calling it as a separate technology only that is why it is called it as a nanotechnology why it is called a nanotechnology why you are uh, when we are already having a lot of technologies okay because of this size and why this size is very important because this size plays a very crucial role. We have any materials falls less than 100 nanometer, they will tend to lose their bulk properties, but they become very excellent super properties. For example, a conductor less than 100 nanometer will become a superconductor. Understanding. So, if for example, if the hydrophobic phobic structure, okay, if it is there, and if it is its size is less than 100 nanometer, it will give you super hydrophobicity. That means whatever if the imagine uh, one particular material giving one property like for example electronic property optical property as x so in bulk so if I mean it falls with the same material if you convert it to the nanostructure it will give you 10x to 100x of that particular property that means conductivity will be increased if it in, in terms of the optical this thing optical property will be increased okay like that okay even hardness can be increased you can simply take a simple example you take one meter stick you try to break it you can break it very easily then reduce half of the meter then it will be a little bit difficult but still you can break then reduce it to the 10 centimeters suddenly so it will be very difficult to break it okay that means that means you, you can break it but you will have to apply extra force that extra force why you are acting why you are putting because as the size is reducing its hardness is increasing like in a similar way nanotechnology every property consider it be it is a magnetism super magnetism we will get be it is a conductance superconductor will get you know be it is a particular optical property excellent optical properties you will get for example for optical properties gold is there now what is the color of the gold it is kind of yellow right you can don't say it as a gold yellow color right so now if you convert into the in the gold if you heat it for 1000 degrees celsius it will give you the nanoparticles that means the gold will bulk gold will be reduced to the nanoparticle now those nanostructures will have different optical property that means if less than 100 nanometer if it falls the gold will start giving you the red color purple color less than 10 nanometer okay so like that understanding why this color changes because when it falls less than 100 nanometer the materials will there uh, giving the excellent properties. The reason behind it is there are many reasons, mainly surface to value ratio. Yes, as you are reducing the size, what is happening? Surface becoming more. So, you are getting the more active uh, atoms on the surface. So, you are having the different properties, understanding. So, and then surface to value ratio over and uh, coming uh, come to the energy uh, bands. In, the, uh, in bulk, we are having the continuous, continuous energy band. Whereas in nanomaterials, the energy bands will be discrete in the uh, structure so that the conduction will be faster. So that was about nanotechnology. Let's start the topic DNA origami. Uh, DNA origami is nothing but uh, it's a one of the technique in the nanotechnology. Now we know what is nanotechnology. That involves folding the DNA molecules into specific shapes. Now this particular DNA origami, what is this DNA origami? It's nothing but a technique. Okay. What is this technique? All of you know DNA. DNA is a double standard DNA. We are all are made up of DNA, right? Because of the DNA, we are here, right? So this DNA, a particular uh, uh, this uh, single DNA double structure. We know that DNA has got double structure. So in that one single DNA molecule is taken, and it you need to keep on rolling it. 
like for a different different shapes it can be the circle spherical different different kind of shapes you make it now why you have to make it for many applications it can be used to create nano structures it can also be used to create uh, you know uh, to study the different molecular interactions also for the drug development systems or drug delivery system now this particular dna is a natural molecule if, if it is put in the inside our body there is nothing wrong in this it is very bi biocompatible biodegradable all the properties that it has got instead of making the liposome or bio uh, uh, capsules or you can say the nanoparticles to use for a, a drug delivery if you are using the dna as a drug delivery then it will be very helpful no that's why this dna single dna is, DNA is taken it is rolled in different different shapes and made it as a drug carrier Okay, this is one of the application of DNA origami. This is the whole process is called as DNA origami. The process involves in using a long single strand DNA. That means you are taking a single stranded DNA, long single stranded DNA, which is called as scaffold. Now here you are calling it as this as a scaffold. Don't get confused with the other tissue engineering scaffold here. Okay, so you are taking a single stranded DNA. You are using it. That is called as scaffold. Now. To guide the folding of sh sh shot, okay. So now you are having the single strand DNA. Now we need to fold it, right? So to fold it, we are using the complementary DNA strands, just for as a reference, so that base we know that DNA is a double helical structure. If it is having the AGTC, the AGTC will be complementary to each other, right? So now if you are following this complementary, so now uh, you have this particular as a DNA which you want to fold it. Now I am taking the reference uh, this thing complementary DNA, which will help to fold this. But it is not in use of DNA organ. Understanding now the complementary DNA strands will come. Okay, they will call it as a staples. It will fix to it and it will try to, you know, this can be manipulated by us, so by the humans, so that we can fold this like this, so that our DNA becomes spherical. Now this can be removed. Understood. Now your DNA will be DNA origami will be removed. So DNA, you make it as a round shape or any other shape. Okay, make sure that it is in a kind of a, a circle or a spherical structure that is called as DNA origami. It is very simple. Okay, so here we are taking this DNA, we are calling it as a scaffold, and this DNA we are calling it as a staples. Okay, so enter desired shape, whatever the shapes you want, you can make it. Now the first DNA origami structures were developed in mid 2000. Okay, and since then the technique has been widely used in a variety of applications, including creation of nanostructures, and the study of molecular interactions, and development of new drug discovery or new drug delivery systems. So as we discussed, creation of new uh, nanometer nanostructures. Since what is the diameter of the DNA? It is 2.5 nanometer, right? So that is a natural nanometer, na nanomaterial DNA is. So this particular nanometer we can use for to create the Partic uh, to this particular DNA organic can be used to create the nanostructures. Next, study of molecular interactions. What are molecular interactions? When it the molecular, what is the molecular scale? It is between the atomic and nano, right? So, it is, sorry, uh, the or now what is nano scale? It is between the atomic and molecular structure. Now, since you are coming with a nano, which is DNA origami, you can understand the molecular interactions very neatly. Why? Because it is it is having a size lesser than the molecule, so you can study the molecules at very closely, so that what exactly the interaction interactions are happening in, in between the molecules, like sodium chloride. I'm giving as an example. A similar way it can be the biomolecules interactions, like protein protein interaction, protein nucleic acid interaction. Those all interactions can be understood properly by using DNA or DNA. Next, development of new drug delivery systems. Drug delivery system means what? Delivery systems is all of you know to deliver something. Here, drug delivery in the sense inside our body, like whatever drug we are taking as a tablet and all, it will be having 90% of sugar, only 10% of the drug. So by the time we eat it, it goes to the stomach and there is a lot of enzymes will be there, it will be degraded, water will be there, degraded, acidic condition will be degraded. By the time it reaches to the small intestine, it will remain only 10%. On that 10% only our body has to absorb. So understanding. So here what is happening? Uh, drug is absorbing in the small intestine. Then only we are getting wherever it is going and then we are getting it relieved by the beat is a fever or any other, any other kind of conditions. But if you are using the drug delivery systems, we can avoid this loss of 90% of drug or any other glucose which is involved in it. We can load only 10% of the drug inside this 
inside this particular DNA origami or uh, drug delivery systems. Okay, and then you can directly inject inside the uh, inside our uh, you know the nerves, or it can be taken orally. Oral drug delivery, transdermal drug delivery can be done. So that it will directly go to the specific point where the drug has to be delivered. For example, if it is a cancer tumor, it will go to the cancer tumor and deliver the drug. How it will go? Because this drug delivery systems will have their anti antibodies. Okay, inside that, so that. Cancer cell will have antigen. Now this will antigen antibody interaction will be there. When you take the drug, it will go on finding the antigen. That is like this is lock and key model. So it's like a couple antigen and antibody. So now antibody I have in uh, my drug. So its girlfriend is there in. Uh, now imagine this is a boyfriend. Its girlfriend is there in a uh, cancer. So it has to go and it will go and find its girlfriend and it will say so antigen antibody complex will form. Then uh, then the tumor will take internalize this particular drug. So, I mean, drug delivery system, and when it internalizes the uh, internalized tumor, it releases the drug there, so that this particular cancer will be killed from inside, so that we can avoid chemotherapy, loss of hair, and we can also avoid the effects on in the different different parts of the body. All those things can be avoided by using this technique. So that's why in the development of new drug delivery systems, also DNA origami can be used. Well, what applications? Creation of nanostructural structures. Second, study of molecular interactions. Third, development of new drugs delivery systems. So now the technological importance of the DNA origami. Some people are talking about you know, topics, I mean uh, the information what I just uh, gave in the introduction will be repeated here. Now the technological importance of the DNA origami lies in the potential to be used in wide range of applications. Now wide range of applications in the sense we are having the nanotechnology that just not we just I explained you. Material science, you all of you know what is material science, it is normal mechanical engineering what you study, so that itself is material science or whatever the science is involved in the material, which is called material science and biomedicine, biomedicine you know, so so far by drug delivery, drug discussion, we have whatever I study that is about biomedicine. So nanotechnology, material science and biomedical application, it has got a lot of applications that is DNA origami. Now some of the key ways in which the DNA origami can impact the technology is, the first thing is nano scale manufacturing. We can create the man, uh, you know, nano structures based on the whatever the size we want. If I want 10 nanometer, I can have. If I want 20 nanometer diameter, diameter, I can have. If I want 100 nanometer diameter, I can have. So that is why DNA organic can be used as a template for precise, precise in the sense specific. I want this, so I will get this. So to precise assembly of the nano structures which have the applications in the various uh, fields, electron nanomaterials which are in electronics, photonics, materials and all it has got applications in your FET, field effective transistor, quantum dot FET is there, graphene FET is there, all these are nanostructure based FETs only. Next drug delivery system, I have explained you what are the, what is drug delivery system, new approach for drug delivery as it can be designed to carry therapeutic agents, therapeutic agents are nothing but the drugs, okay, directly to the specific cells or tissues. This all technology has been, you know, success, uh, success in preclinical trials, trials in US, European countries, you know, including uh, the Germany, Sweden, Switzerland, okay, even in the, in the Middle East like uh, Dubai and Saudi, there are a lot of researchers are going on recently and in Japan there is an excellent work has been going on in Japan based on this particular drug delivery systems. They are using the drug delivery system so that we can avoid the loss of the drug and any adverse effects of the drug. So we can directly deliver the drug to the specific area where it is required, specifically in cancer related issues. Next, biosensors. Biosensors, all of you know what it is. So, DNA origami can be used to develop the new biosensors that can detect specific biological molecules and also signals in the real time. So, any signals, biosignals, if you want to detect, that can be used. The bio, uh, DNA origami can be attached to the normal sensors. So, that will act as a biosensor. Now, specific biomolecules, for example, if you want to detect the particular antigen, particular enzyme, particular protein, particular nucleotide, particular any kind of biomolecules, you can have this particular DNA origami on your biosensor so that it can detect very easily since it has got biological property. Next, biomedical imaging. So, it is very wonderful uh, you know, material can be used in the tool of biomedical imaging so that it can design, uh, sorry, it can be designed to target specific cells or tissues. To target uh, specific cells and tissues, drug delivery system how it works, the similar way it works here so that we can target a particular cell like a cancer cells or cancer tissues or a cancer tumor and we can study that cancer tumor in the 
in, in diagnosis. So diagnosis is enough to detect the cancer cells or uh, to detect any diseases. And it also provides high resolution images, the real time high resolution images you will get in bioimaging. So next gene therapy. Gene therapy DNA algorithm can be used to deliver the uh, deliver vehicle for the gene therapy. That means it will act as how it is using it has been used as a drug delivery system. And similarly, it can be used for a gene delivery system. So gene delivery is nothing but so gene therapy is nothing but to you know, imagine a particular person is not having uh, you know from the birth only he he can't see. That means he is blind. He means blind in the sense there is a particular gene which is coding for his vision protein is lost in his gene. That's why he is blind from birth. So now we are engineering his gene. We are replacing that defected gene with a new gene. So that he will get that protein so that he will get the vision. That is called the gene therapy. Understanding. Now to replace this particular gene we need the delivery systems. For that delivery system DNA origami can be used. Since it is a DNA it can be used very easily. Next biocatalyst. So it will act, it will involve in the, you know, to develop in the new approaches for biocatalyst to perform a specific chemical reactions. You know that enzymes uh, or catalysts are nothing but it can facilitate the reaction. Like that we, as a biocatalyst or DNA origami it can be used. Next nano patterning. Nano patterning is nothing but again to create or uh, to pattern or to fabricate where how exactly the nano patterning should be there. For example, microchips, nano chips for your you know electronic gadgets like supercomputers, quantum computers, and all you need. So for that DNA origin can be used as a tool for the nano patterning. So it can be programmed to arrange and position nano scale structures with precise control, precise and specific. You know specific whatever the size and shape you want we can have so those are about the important technological importance advantages first one is programmability that means we can have control over how exactly the folding should be done we feel precise and controlled folding of dna molecule will be there into specific sh shapes or required space what space we need that shape can be it can be we can get so which can be programmed to fit the requirements of a particular applications next versatility so dna origami can be uh, used to create a wide range of shapes for example 2d dimension shapes three dimension shape it can be used for many applications next high precision capable of creating an structures structure with high precision and accuracy right useful for many applications in the field of nanotechnology next functionality so you can use this particular dna origami origami structures you can attach with some different different structures. Functionalization is using nothing but you are attaching something so that we, we then only it will become more specific function. So you can uh, attach different molecules, additional molecules or materials. For example, like proteins, nanoparticles, and other materials, which can make them very useful for a variety of applications. Next, biocompatibility that we have studied so far many times it is repeated. So that the biocompatibility is in the sense when we you are using something inside our body, we should check for biocompatibility. And it means that when you use it inside our body, our inside organ cells or anything should not get any effect from that material. So that is called that's why it will be helpful for drug delivery applications and other uh, bio bioimaging applications and other biomedical applications that was what i want is limitations complexity obviously since the dna structure uh, uh, creating this particular dna organic structure is highly complex is challenging and it takes time and also it requires special knowledge and even expertise okay all these things are new expertise should be there next cost since the producing and synthesis of dna required a dna origami that can be very high so making it as very expensive technique next stability so here we know that dna is nothing but again a, which is natural molecule natural molecules are always fragile that means they are very smooth they are not so hard and all right so they are very fragile so they can be degraded by the enzymes or any other factors which can limit their stability and shelf life like temperature ph and etc next scalability now that suddenly i want to make a you know million copies of dna or yami that cannot be done so scalability is a challenge so large quantities of the complex dna organ structures is difficult to form and it is highly expensive and also it requires a lot of time money and energy so that was about limitations of dna origami so by competing we will discuss in the next class